Sister Rose, please welcome her as she comes. Father, we're so thankful this morning for who you are. We thank you for your divine love for mankind. We thank you because you search heaven to find someone who was worthy to unite man with you again. I am so grateful this morning for all that you've done for us, for the suffering that you went through in our, on our behalf. Thank you because you love me more than anybody in the whole world. Thank you, God, for no matter where I am or what I'm going through in my life, you're always there. Thank you for being the best friend that I could have ever had. Thank you, God, for not only being my friend, most of all, for being my Savior. To save me from myself. Save me from a hell separated from you. Thank you this morning. 
I pray, God, that you might be glorified in this place. I pray people would think that you'd wake them up, God, to the realization of who you are and what you are willing to do. It's time that we give back. Thank you, God, again for everything. You didn't have to bless us. You didn't have to remember us, but you did, and I thank you for it. Amen and amen. We're so happy today to be in this place. And we're here because we want to say to him, thank you. It's just not a much about all the, a lot of things that people do. It really is about him. As you see this crucifix here this morning, I remember when I was looking for it to have on Easter Sunday. And I called a place in New York trying to find somebody who would do that for me. The first man that I called got very angry as I described what I was looking for. Not the pretty Jesus with no scars or nothing happening. I said, I want to see the whole thing the way it is. He got very angry with me when I described what I wanted. And he said, Rose, why would you want something like that, that, that kind of gore, he said. And I said, what's wrong with it? This is real. If you want to understand what Easter is supposed to be about, this is real. And I said, give me the real thing. We just kind of try to step over the real thing, but that's what I want. He said, well, I'm not going to do it here. I wouldn't do it for you. He said, I'd have to close my shop down if I did such a thing. And why would you want it? I said, well, you know what? I can't think of his name now because it's not worth remembering. And I said... Why, why does that offend you? He said, because that's the, you don't do that to people. I said, yes, you do. People need to see and see the price that was paid for them. And he said, well, I'm not going to do it. He said, Rose, I'm, I'm a Jew. I said, well, you sound like that. He went on, he said, he started calming down. The more I said, why don't we face reality? We would not be here today if it was not for him. I said, I'm alive. I'm well. I have a good life. Because he said, I came to give you life, an abundant life. I wouldn't have that today. Should not that deserve something? And he got quiet and he said, Rose, I hope you find somebody. I said, I promise you I will. We ended up in Las Vegas at a place there that says, yeah, we can do it for you. This is only a replica of what we plan to do in the church that we build. I want the whole scene, the whole uh, crucifixion to be at the door of the church. When you come in, you will always hear the sounds of Calvary. You will hear that. It won't be just something for us to forget about. We need to do things when it's concerning him that's going to last. That when you leave this place today, whether you go to dinner or whether you go back home or whatever, you're going to remember that Easter is about celebrating him. And none of you would have a life. You wouldn't have a family. And yet we try to put the family before God. You wouldn't have one if it wasn't for God. I am thankful today. I don't take anything for granted because I realize my life is full today and only because he made it full. And I hope that you will give it some thought. I hope that you'll take a moment to say thank you for what you've done. When you have your dinner, that I'm eating because he made it possible. I'm breathing this morning because he made it possible. Before I go into the word, I do want to say thanks to all of our military families. We love you in a way that we can't express it. Uh, if I can say anything to you, that God truly loves you. He cares about you. Yes, he does. So I'm going to preach a message this morning that most preachers probably not preaching. They say he rose. He died on Calvary. We already know that. What you going to do with it? We know that. So this seems like a strange message. It won't be for long. But I'm coming from Exodus. What chapter am I in? 
from the 32nd chapter. Yes. The 26th and the 25th verse. And when Moses saw that the people are naked, were naked, for Aaron had made them naked, and unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the, in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp. And slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. For Moses had said, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his, upon his son, upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing today. Let me say to you. Moses had gone up to the mountain to meet with God. He was their leader. And when he came back down, what did he find? He found people that he brought out of Egypt worshiping another God. You got to ask yourself today, how, who am I really worshiping and whose side am I really on? you got to ask yourself that. If you're on the Lord's side, then you're in a good place. But if you're serving the devil and he is real, you're in a bad place. And is that not the case that people have so many bad things in their life? It's who they got running their life. But if we've got God in our life and we're on his side, we can win no matter how intense the battle, no matter what's going on, we can win. You cannot win in this world without God. I can tell you now, every day you wake up, you don't know from day to day what's going to happen in this country. We have never been so close to a nuclear war as we are right now. And so when you wake up and you go to bed last night, you didn't know what you'd find this morning. But for sure I can tell you this, if you've got God on your side and, he, and you're on his side, you can win. You don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. Because God is who he is. And he is the I am. And I'm telling you, he's the I am today. He's the I am tomorrow. He's the I am no matter what. He's good. He's good. Yes. When Moses saw this, he was grieved to his heart. I worked with these people. I went to Egypt. I helped them to get out. And now they're not slaves anymore. But let me tell you something. If you're not on the Lord's side, you're a slave. A slave to what? A slave to sin. A slave to doing it wrong instead of right. You look at your life and you say, I'm going to change things, but you can't change it by yourself. It's going to take God in your life to change you. If you're going to be on his side, be willing to do what it takes to be there. That's what you got to think about. Some people look at it, well, I don't, I'm not really a Christian. I'm not, I, don't wanna, I don't really want to talk about that. Oh, you better talk about that. Because somewhere, someday, you're going to die. And you're going to one or the other place, either heaven or hell. But Jesus came so we don't have to go to hell. He didn't make hell for, for you or for me. He made it for the devil and his angels. But because man has chosen not to be on God's side and on the devil's side, he said, then you're going to spend eternity with him. You say, well, is that fair? Of course it's fair. It's fair because you didn't go take the good way out that he came down so you could have a way out of where you're at. And I want to fix it where you never have to go to hell. I want to give you power over the power of the devil. I don't want you to give in to all this other garbage. I want you to get out of it. He cared enough to do that. I understand we have to go to war. But we that are Christians, we're at war every day because the devil is out to defeat you. He's out to take advantage of you. You've got to say, no, I'm not following you. And we have the power to say that. Now, if you don't have the power to do it, that's understandable. But when God has made it possible for us to have the power, why aren't you using that power? 
We take the power and use it for everything else, but we don't use it for God. And we don't think about him. We're so busy with our life every day. This church is fuller today on Easter Sunday than it's been since last Easter. That tells you something. Is it about him? What is it about? You got up this morning for sure, I'm going to church. What is it about? Is it about because I'm on his side? If you were on his side, you'd be at church every Sunday. Every Sunday to say, thank you for what you've done. You don't owe me nothing. When you got up this morning, you owe him a thank you. When you laid down last night, you owe him a thank you. You got to look at him and say, God, I want to say thank you for everything you did for me because you didn't owe me nothing. He's not in our debt. We are in his, in his debt. We got to stop for a minute and say, who owes what? We owe him. He don't owe us. When he came here to give his life, it wasn't because he owed us. He came because he loved. You know what he's saying to man? Love me back. Nothing is worse than you loving somebody and they don't love you back. Take a moment. Think about what he suffered. We have the, the article that is written by the physician's view of, of Calvary. If you read that, it'll rip your heart out. He didn't just die, he suffered. Meaning, listen to this. My sins were heavy enough. Can you imagine bearing the sins of the whole entire world? How heavy that was. But he was willing to do it. No wonder... He fell under the weight of the cross because you was on that cross. I was on there. That's why all over the world people were there that still haven't even been born yet. He couldn't, he could hardly stand up under the pressure. They didn't want him as they don't want him today. You think if somebody paid the price and gave you a chance, gave you life, gave you eternal life, do you owe them something? I do and I'm paying my debt. I'm never going to pay it off because it's too big to pay it off. But I sure can invest in it. You can invest in it by giving your life to him. Say, God, today I turn my life over to you. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to take a moment to say thank you. Yes. I'm alarmed. And people walk around and say, ah, I'm not into that God stuff. You, know. you better get into that God stuff. Because one day you're going to stand before him. You're going to answer. You're going to answer whether or not you took time to say this is God's time. We're so busy on, with our jobs, with our families, with so many things. You would think you got six days a week. Could you at least give God one? Could you at least say, Jesus, thank you. Sunday I'll be there. A standing invitation that I made with heaven and I'm going to be there. Yeah. We will break engagements and, 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 and appointments that we have, but we don't do it for him. Say, oh, no. Every day I go in prayer from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I tell them, if you got to have something fixed in the house, schedule it for morning. I always work my life around that because I don't want you to interrupt my prayer time. So then they'll call and say, tell Miss Banks we can be there at 1 o'clock. No, they can't. You have to wait another day. It's prayer time. You got to ask yourself, how long has it been since you just had a good prayer meeting with just you and God? Did you stop? We used to sing a song at home. Did you stop to pray this morning? As you went along your way, did you stop just one moment to say, give me strength today. Give me, help me to do it right. Help me to go on my job and succeed. Help me, God, if I see somebody along the way who needs help, help me to reach out to these people. When I see a homeless person, did you take a moment to say, that could be me, except for the grace of God, here's something to help you. Yes, I can't stand to see a homeless person. 
and I see them, I want to get to them. Sometimes I can't get to them because of the traffic or whatever. But if, it's, if, I, if the traffic's not in my way, I'm, getting, I'm giving them some money. I got to. Because it could be you. We act like, you know, wherever we are today, well, I deserve it. You don't deserve anything. You deserve one thing, that is I fall in love with God and give my life to him. Make him number one in your life because if he's number one, you're going to have a good life. You put him second if you want to. God is not second to anybody. He chooses not to be. And he has every right to do it. Think about it. You know what? Why would not give the person who made my whole life possible priority in my life? Why would not before I get up in the morning, I got to talk to God? I do not. I was up this morning at 4 o'clock a.m. When I wake up, the first thing on my mind is, thank you for this day. Thank you I woke up. Thank you what you've done. Thank you because I still can take care of myself. Thank you I don't have to have somebody to get me out of bed in the morning and get me to the restroom or, or to the sink to, walk, to brush my teeth. Thank you for that. It may seem small, but it's big. You just look around the world and see how many people are suffering today. There's a lot of people that can't even raise their hand, that can't raise their head off the pillow. Some people are laying there wishing they just could sit up again. Wishing I could turn my head left to right. Wishing somehow I could just put forth one step. And you just get out of bed, act like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I go in and brush my teeth and, and whatever, and I just go my way. All of it is because somebody bigger than you, bigger than me, has made all this possible. For without it, I couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. This life is full of heartache and sorrow. The word says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So you can't be born in this world and not be full of, have full of a lot of trouble. You think about it. So if I have trouble, at least I can go to somebody who can say, I help you today. That's where my strength is. That's where my life is. That is what it's all about. I can talk to him this morning when I can't talk to nobody. When nobody understands what's going on deep in my heart, when I called on him, he understood. Why? Because he made me. He knows what, I, what I'm feeling. He's there to help me. He's there to help me. I couldn't make it by myself. Our soldiers could never fight a war anywhere without God being there for you. Because you've got to be alive to fight. People don't fight dead. So you... I see so many of our guys being shipped out and deployed. Said, God, take care of them. Please bring them back. Give them a chance. Why are they in harm's way? I said, put this prayer cloth somewhere. God will protect you. But now, what are you going to say when you come back from Afghanistan? You could have came back in a box. You could be so deformed and hurt from war. Until you could be at Walter Reed Hospital or other hospitals laying flat on your back, no legs left, no arms left. Sometimes you'll see these pictures, it rips your heart out. Long scars in their head where they've been operated on for brain damage. I look at them and some of them kids are, are holding on to them. The wife is holding them, but they're almost like they're not here. That could be you. Any military person in this room this morning, that could be you. And if you're not in the military, it still could be you. Because you can get badly injured right here, right here in this country. And if you're military, on the base, there's danger all around you. All around you. So what am I going to do? I am going to take some time in my life. And you got to make that time happen. You, you, you know, we all are so busy. If we wanted to say we don't have time for God, it would be true, but it's, it's a disaster that you even said it. I would like to give myself to God and give him some prime time. You know, even on TV, you get the best shows in prime time. Give God some prime time, time that you could have used for yourself, time you could have done something with the family. 
So surely you could have done this or done that. Give him some prime time. I remember many years ago, many, many years ago, we were stationed in Germany, you know, in Oklahoma, Fort Seal, Oklahoma. And back then, uh, Barnaby Jones was on in Hawaii Five O. I love those shows. Boy, love those shows. And they were usually back to back. So I was sitting on the couch with my husband, and all of a sudden this feeling come over me to go pray. I think I gotta see Barnaby Jones. I ain't telling nobody, I'm whispering to myself, I gotta see Barnaby Jones, because see that they done showed you a little teaser. You said, oh, I got to see that. So I sat there. The Lord come to me again. Go pray. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to go pray. Soon as Hawaii 5 will go pray. I'm, I'm going in there and I'm going to pray. I didn't tell my husband what was going on. So when the, when the show went off, I jumped off the couch, went in the room, shut my door, got on my knees. And if you've ever heard God speak, he spoke that day. He said, I don't want your leftover time. I want prime time. Don't give me leftover stuff. That's what we want to give God. Well, if I feel up to it, I'll go to church in the morning. But you're going to work Monday. You know what they'll tell me? I got to pay my bills. Yeah, but I, I can't do that. I can't go to look outside. It's raining. Oh, it's raining. I had planned to go to church today. Oh, but it's raining. And why is that stopping you? Nothing else stops us in the rain. Nothing stops Colorado. No matter how much it's raining, no matter how much it's snowing, we out there digging out if we have to. We got to get where we got to go. My children, a couple of them were in Washington this week, uh, past week, and they had two inches of snow and they shut the city down. I said, are you kidding me? The whole city, all the kids not going to school, nothing. Two inches. I thought they'd never survive in Colorado. See, two inches, you can't make me with the Dallas, Texas one time. And, 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 we, and we got in the car headed from the airport. And, and the man said, well, everything is closed down. And, and, and I said, why? He said, see the snow? I'm telling you, we talking about some dust. There wasn't no real snow, dust. You could see the street and everything, just a little dust. The city shut down. You know what? That's kind of the way people live their life every day. Well, you know, if this don't happen, if the creek don't rise, the creek ain't going to rise, and if it do ride on it, it'll come to church. <laughs> don't just sit on it and just say, well, you know, I'm not going to be able to get there. We will make the least excuse for going to church. Well, you know, we hadn't been with the kids. You got six days to be with the kids. Can you give God at least an hour to two hours on a Sunday? How complicated is that? But, oh, when trouble comes, the first thing people say, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You want him to have mercy? What did you do to even ask him that? D does he owe you anything? No, he doesn't. And, and then we turn around and get mad with God. I don't know why all this stuff is going wrong in my life. I'll tell you why it's going wrong. Because Jesus is not at the, front, at, at the front of your life. He's everywhere but there. And some people's lives, he's not even on the list. We just don't go to church anymore. Yeah, church is just about money. Church has got a bunch of hypocrites. Well, why don't you come and be a real one then? Why don't you come and be a real one? I didn't like to go to church when I was being brought up in the home with my grandmother. I was sick of church. And all they do is talk about God, I said, and then they shouting in the house. It ain't church time. Stupid. I did not understand what they had. That one day it would work in my life. Now I understand why they was talking about God at home. Why they were praying together. Why did the people from the church come over and we just have a little sweet fellowship? Just us and Jesus. I understood it. So you can look at your life today and say, I'm just, you know. What she said was true, you know, but she don't know, she don't understand. Oh, I understand. I understand. When they, when Moses asked for them, everybody's on the Lord's side, come over where I'm at. 3,000 was left that didn't come. And Moses said, take your sword in your hand, if it's your brother, kill him. If it's your 
if it's your friend, kill him. If it was your companion, kill him. If you ain't on the Lord's side, you don't deserve to live. Do, what, why, why are you treating him that way? I said to a lady the other day, I said, what, what would happen if your only child that you had uh, would come out and see the different problems that's going on in the country and say, uh, they could change things if they could just give their life. And they gave their life. And then people said, I don't, well, I don't, he didn't have to give his life for me. I don't really care. I said, what would you, how would you feel? That's why when God looks down from heaven and see the people on this earth that rather be any place but in church, rather be any place than serving God, I'd rather be 100,000 miles across the world. I don't, don't want to go. I'm just busy. You don't want to do it. You know what? You find this out about people, what they want to do, they make time for it. If you really want to do it. But when you don't want to do it, it's easy to say, I'm just not up to, I got a headache. My back is hurting. You know, I'm feeling sick this morning. What's going to church? I'm feeling sick. You become a serious liar. And then you start believing your own lies. Yeah, I'm sick, you know. You can convince yourself of anything you want to because yourself will never fight you back. Just talk to yourself. It looks like people are talking to themselves a lot of time, but we live in an IT age, and, uh, and people go down the street just talking. You don't see no phone. You don't see nothing. You look over in the car. They look crazy. I'm, I'm so far from the IT, uh, IT uh, age, even though I'm living in part of it. But in our day, we didn't have that stuff. I couldn't believe it yesterday, me and my son-in-law and my daughter was in the car, headed out. And she asked for something. He said, he's in the front seat. He said, I'll, I'll text it to you. I said, is there something wrong with just turning around and saying, yes, yeah, we don't talk enough as it is. Now they fix it. Well, you don't have to say nothing. Just a stupid, what do you call that emoji? A stupid thing. I said, what is these little black things uh, coming up on the phone? And, and, and I'm in the bed. And, hey, hi, how you doing? Stupid. <laughs> and I said, what, what's wrong with this world? A man had a problem communicating all his life. Now, now the devil fixed the world. They got phones. They don't hear you. They texting. They're, they're, they're sending emails. It's all this stuff. And they sitting around look like a bunch of crazy zombies. We don't talk to each other no more. Family time is a gone time. <laughs> they showed some man that, that they, they tried him out on a show with his kids, took, the, took their telephones and their, and their computers away from them, and they almost went crazy. They almost went crazy. They were evil. They were cranky. They're like people that's addicted to drugs. They're addicted to the phone. I remember being out, out of lunch with somebody on my daughter's birthday, and his phone was turned down like that. Every few minutes he picked it up. Like he said, is it everything okay? Because I ain't heard it ring. <laughs> so I pick it back up. I said, can you just lay that down and enjoy a meal? I mean, it's unbelievable. And I get so frustrated. They sitting in my, in my den. Did, did you know about such such a thing? You have that number? Oh, yeah, I'll send it to you. I said, you're in the same room. For God's sake, she's right here, you're right here. Can you talk? What's wrong with the pencil and a piece of paper? It don't happen no more. I'm glad I'm not of y'all's age. I'm glad. It's, it's, it's kind of have a sickening, unbelievable disconnection. People that can't connect. See, if I text you something, I can't text my emotions. That's why they come out with them crazy e emojis. So now I'm, gr I'm grinning on here. Hey! I said, God, help us. It's sad. My, my son's in the IT field. He said he picked up a pen, a pen one day to write cursive and discovered he couldn't write it no more. Because everything is on the computer. Everything. 
if God could have just a piece of your computer time. Just put your cell phone down for 30 minutes and say, Lord, this is your time. No, you'll lose your mind. Lord, it's your time, but it's almost 30 minutes. I got 20, 10 more minutes. Give me a break. We got time. Just give up some IT time. And say, you know what? I don't, I think I'm just gonna dedicate this day to the Lord. I'm not gonna even answer my phone. You know what they do? They go bug eyed. You say, what's wrong? I don't know, just being off that phone is just it just gets to me. You are addicted. Just the way people are addicted to drugs, food, all type of addictions. Get addicted to him. Let him just be in your mind, in your heart, in your soul all the time. You can't hardly tell who's on the Lord's side. I was telling my grandson this week, I said, uh, Kyle, I said, I was just thinking about this because I'm not a sports person. And I said, um, it hit me when I was thinking about this message. You could tell the difference in your team, whether that's that team or this team. You know why? Because each person has his own thing. They have their own colors. They, they have all these things. So when your folks out there playing football and falling down and hitting their heads, you know who it is by his number on his back and the color of his uniform. Oh, yes. That's the Denver Broncos. <laughs> I hear them talking. I'm, I'm at home sometimes. They come and say, did you know, you know what happened today to so-and-so? I said, who y'all talking about? It, it, it's some sports person. I don't know any of them. But my grandson, he going to have on some orange and blue. Orange and blue cap. Orange and blue sweater. Tennis shoes, orange and blue. You know what? God said, I want to be able to tell the difference between the devil's folks and my folks. By the way you live. By the way you live, we all look, you know, it was a time you could tell a Christian woman years ago. They all look the same. That's why you know they ain't on the Lord's side. Who's on the Lord's side look different. He said, I made you a peculiar people, a different people. You're not like everybody else. That's why they look at you and say, what's wrong with her? You know, she look like a Scrooge. I'm a Christ Scrooge. Is that okay? But he knows where I'm at. You should be able to walk down the street and people say, are you a Christian? Everybody's a Christian now. They do anything they want to do. You know, God was so, God was so much into and separating his people. If you go back under the law, even certain fabrics they couldn't wear. You couldn't wear it. If the heathen wore it, you couldn't do it. Because I want to know the difference. I want to put a distinct difference between my people and the devil's people. And so, back in Deuteronomy, he says, I don't even want a woman to put on a garment that pertains to a man because I wanted to look like a woman. Then in the New Testament, it says, I want you to dress in modest apparel. It affects our dress. Try judging people if they're Christian now. It can't hardly get warm good before they wear panties outside. It's true. Because the shorts are so short. I thought, why bother? It's not even warm enough yet. It barely, barely hit 50. It's, un it's unbelievable. They can't wait. We went to vacation in Florida. I never seen so many naked people in my whole life. They all spread. I thought, do anybody work down here? It's just people on the beach naked. And it doesn't matter if you're fat, skinny, or in between. We were driving down the street. This lady crosses the street. She's got a beach sheet. <laughs> Not a towel. A beach sheet. Like this. Going across, I mean, she needed all of that sheet. And I'm sitting on the balcony looking and thinking, wow. Do you feel naked? No. And this is a city a country of boobs. 
you don't, if you didn't get none from God, they go buy them some. It's the truth. It's the truth. And everyone, I'm thinking, what is it with boobs? Oh, you're not even sexy without boobs. I watched the interview of one of Donald Trump's women on, on uh, with, with uh, I think it was Anderson on CNN. Now, when I saw, first saw a picture, she had big boobs. But during the interview, I thought, was her chest? Oh, they wasn't hers. <laughs> there she sat. Flat as a pancake. But the other picture just looked all oh, this sexy girl with these big boobs and all this stuff. And sitting there as flat as a pancake. Doing an interview, I thought I would not want somebody to see me thinking I got something and I don't even have it. It do you a lot of good. People that's on the Lord's side, they not, they're not going out buying boobs. Either you was born with them and you don't have none. Give it a break, baby. Enjoy the pieces you do have. Enjoy that. Yes. Who's on the Lord's side? You can't tell by the way they dress. You can't tell by the way they talk. You can't tell by, by, the, by, the, by the places they go to. Christians ain't in the club breaking it down. On the Lord's side, you're, not bre you're breaking it down in church. Yes. Honey, we having church up in here. Yes, yes, for sure. You got it mixed up. We can't see you on the Lord's side. And you need, if you're going to be in this war, you don't need cowards to go with you. Cowards run. You need people that are strong, fighting back. Because the enemy comes, they don't run from him. They confront him. Think about where you at this morning. Are you a coward? Could somebody depend on you in time of war? Why are you talking smack? But oh, don't let the war start. Where's John? Oh, last time I seen him, he was running down the street down there and went around that corner. When you're a Christian, you stand up for it. You're not ashamed of it. You're glad. I'm, I can say I am a Christian. And I'm not just saying words. I live it. We need to make a proclamation to the whole world. I'm on the Lord's side. They should look at you and say something's different about you. Because everybody that's on the Lord's side is different. If somebody goes in the door straight, I guarantee you, but the Christian is coming through the window. It's something different that makes us different. Whose side are you on this morning? You got to ask yourself that. Well, am I really on the Lord's side? No. Well, how do you know, honey? Don't be judging. You don't have to judge. You know what? If I go outside this building right now and there's a tree out there and it's got peaches on it, do I have to judge whether that's a peach tree? I know it's a peach tree. It's got peaches on it for God's sake. So how do you know it's a peach tree? I'm getting ready to eat one. That's how I know. Think about it. Where do you, where do you want to go? Why don't you make this Easter Sunday the beginning of a new life? Because he died, he rose again, he went back to his father, and he sits at his right hand, and he's interceding for me and for you every day. He's my intercessor when things are tough. Because he came here and walked the earth, he's pleased to the Father for your protection, for your needs. Think about it. Why don't you say, you know, I think I'll take this Easter and say, I'm going to quit being just an Easter Sunday morning person. Because you ain't coming back tonight. We'll have plenty of room in this building. Oh, you done done God a big favor. We went to church and went to Kentucky Fried or, or somebody else. Come on. Let it last longer than that. I, I gave him my life 52 years ago. I have never, ever wanted to go the other direction, ever. I love it. It's peace. It's joy. It's happiness. It's contentment. I don't have to be a certain place with a certain person to feel complete or whole. Don't ever marry somebody to make you whole. Do you know man don't share himself? 
He said, this is my other half. No, it ain't. He's still your other hoe. He's not sharing anything with you. If you're not complete to start in a situation, don't try to make somebody else complete you. But now if you let God complete you, you're really complete. He can make you whole. He can set you free. You're sitting here this morning and say, Sister Rose, what you're saying is true. I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking I need to change my life. We make an altar call here in a few minutes. You say this Easter Sunday, I'm going to make a commitment to the Lord. Make the commitment like you do to your job. Make the commitment like you have to your wife or your husband. Whatever you're mostly committed to, give that commitment to God. Set that back some. It'll still work out, but it'll work out even better. So I am convinced that we got so many divorces in this country simply from the fact we don't have God nowhere in the middle of the marriage. He's way over here somewhere and over there and maybe not anywhere. That's why, you, that's why your marriage shakes. You say, you know, we kind of grew apart. You, if you ever was in love, you don't grow apart. I was married to my husband for 35 years. We never grew apart. We're separated now by death. The only thing separated us. Yeah. Had the most fun, happy. With seven kids, we were still happy. You think with all them kids, God, what do you, what do, you do? <laughs> still happy, fulfilled. To the very end, such thing as, I'm tired of Charles and he's tired of me. We hook up with too many people that don't fit anyway. Try to shoe on. It did fit good, but a few days, that thing's too big. If I could only convince you this morning to take a look at your life and say, I need to get it fixed. I'm going to start this Easter. Not next Easter, this one. All you got to do is say, Lord, here I am. I ain't gave you no time. I'll be honest with him. I haven't, do, I haven't done what I should have done. I haven't, had, I haven't hardly went to church. My kids don't even know what that is. Those kids need to be trained to f who is God? What is he? How does he make a difference in your life? Your kids need that. You're not always going to be there. But they don't see nothing their whole life. I've talked to too many people say, we never went to church. And, they, and they're still not going to church. Uh, people were everywhere but church. So this morning, as I end this message, I say to you, make a, a proclamation. Make it loud enough your family hears it. Make it loud enough the people on the job hears it. Make it loud enough that people say, well, what's going on? What's all the noise about? It's about a proclamation that I got my life changed today. I don't care who know it. I'm not ashamed. He said, you're going to be ashamed. If you get in church and you shout, you know, people going to laugh at you. They laugh at you looking stupid at the club. That don't stop you. Yeah. Yes. So this morning, they're getting ready to sing, which wasn't supposed to be sung early, which I will get them about as soon as the service is over. I said, Wanda, what are they doing singing that song? Stand up. Told them three times. That's the last song when Mama used to preach. <laughs> Dumb! <laughs> Why did you forget that three times? That's going to be the last song. And when they stood up and said, stand up, I just wanted to go over and say, sit down. <laughs> Give me a break. Could you not get that? So you're going to hear that again. And if you're on the Lord's side when they start singing, I want you to stand up. If you're, on the, if you're not on his side, I want you to come up front while they sing it and say, I'm getting ready to change partners. I've been running with the devil forever. I'm getting ready to give my life over to God. I'm getting ready to make it. You'll go out of here so happy and so fulfilled, and we got plenty of food back there for you to eat. You wouldn't have that if it wasn't for God. This little hole in the front of our face. Oh, we love it. Oh, my God, what is this? All these things that we wrapped up in, but we ain't wrapped up in God. He's better than a piece of pie. Taste 
of the Lord and see that he is good. He wants to bless your life. He wants to change it. So if you're on the Lord's side, when they start singing it now, just when they say stand up, you stand up. And you say, don't stand up and lie. This is God's house. <laughs> I don't want you to start lying and standing up. Uh, I mean, suppose God just pop you right in the top of your head and say, take a seat. You ain't on my side. You ain't drinking booze and doing drugs and partying and all this stuff. That ain't on the Lord's side. That's the devil's stuff. That's right. I don't need to uh, tease you. Kia. It's my little grandgirl. She comes and changes my shoes out every Sunday. They're getting ready to sing it. I want you to listen to it. While they're singing it, open your heart up in here. Open your heart up. But they're going to say, I'm getting ready to take a seat over here. A preacher going to be on this side. If you want to get in this line, some people going to get in this, in my line. Say, so, uh-uh. I know I don't have him, so... When they say stand up, you come on crawl. Okay? God bless you. I'll wait for you. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up.